And Dr. Cole, I want to get into a little bit about the skin care and sun protection during outdoor exercise, often overlooked, but boy, you read more stories of, uh, of skin cancer and melanoma and things. And we're going to bring on an expert here coming up in just a couple of seconds. But um, it's really uh, a critical, critical part of uh, when people think about uh, outdoor exercising, right? Yeah, I mean, I think certainly on the prevention side, it's important. On the recognition side, it's really important. So people who, you know, they know what to look for. Um, there's a surveillance component, you know, just like breast cancer and prostate cancer, skin cancer requires surveillance. So those are things that we really uh, have to be uh, cog- cognizant of. And um, look, this is one of those conditions that if you are uh, unfortunately diagnosed with this, um, there's a, there's a, uh, the, 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 ec- the outcomes and expectations are uh, far more predictable with early treatment. So early recognition is absolutely key and prevention is primary. Well, our expert uh, joining us this morning is Dr. Stephen Mendrea. He is a board certified dermatologist and a partner at Lakeview Dermatology. And Dr. Mandrea, thanks so much for joining us here on Sports Medicine Weekly. Hi, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Doc. Okay, aside from using the obvious sweat-proof sunblock, how else does an outdoor athlete protect herself, himself from the elements? Well, I, I think I'd, I'd just like to say first off that because of uh, the increase in skin cancer and especially melanoma uh, over the last uh, several decades, um, there are actually over 96,000 new cases um, that are predicted for 2019, and 57,000 will be in men. Um, so sun protection really, really is important. Um, but uh, uh, sun sun damage can affect the eyes uh, as well as the skin. So sun uh, sun protective UV blocking glasses are really important. Um, sun protective clothing is the best strategy to protect the skin because then you don't have to worry about reapplying, you know, messy sunblock. And there's all kinds of uh, garments with UPF, ultraviolet protection factor, uh, in the clothing. Um, one one brand that uh, comes to mind is Cooley Bar, uh, C-O-O-L-I-B-A-R. Another is Solumbra. But look for a rating of 30 or higher. Um, and this means that the, the fabric allows one thirtieth of the, of the sun's radiation to penetrate, and of course, hats. Let me ask you a question: um, Is is melanoma of the eye uh, from exposure, or is that a whole different entity? It's it's usually a whole different entity. That um, just like you can get a primary melanoma inside the body, like in the in the brain, um, not because of sun exposure. It can happen in the eye. Um, uh, most of those are not related to sun okay. exposure. I got it. But increased sun damage can do, you know, various uh, degrees of the different uh, eye problems. All right. So, so let me ask you some just basic question. What, you know, you said SPF 30 or more. Is that correct? Yeah, SPF 30 or more. In general, the higher the number, the hot, the longer it's going to last without reapplying. Um, once you get to 50 or 60 SPF, um, it doesn't make as much of a difference because we don't want people having a false sense of security and going, you know, three, four or five hours without reapplying. Okay. And should it be, should it be waterproof definitively? Yeah. Water resistant, sweat resistant, um, of, uh, 80 minutes is usually the best you can do. And then you got to reapply. Okay. Our guest is Dr. Stephen Mendrea, board-certified dermatologist, a partner at Lakeview Dermatology, talking about skin care and sun protection during outdoor exercise. And I know our listeners, some of them want to know this, Doc. uh, How do we reverse the signs of skin damage from outdoor exercise, i.e. sun damage and breakouts from sweat? Um, So some people get a so-called runner's face, um, both men and women, usually a little older, 40, 40 and above. Um, it can co- coincide with some some fat loss that comes with aging and a lot of exercise and high metabolism um, and uh, an increase in wrinkles and skin laxity. So, you know, we do various uh, laser cosmetic filler treatments to, to help improve a lot of that, um, but still look natural, um, not, uh, you know, nothing... Uh, 
out of the ordinary or crazy, uh, at least not here in the Midwest. Uh, most people don't want that. And um, we like to recommend using antioxidants on the skin, like a vitamin C serum, uh, in addition with sunscreen in, in the morning before sun exposure, because there's evidence that uh, there's less um, ultraviolet damage when the sunscreen is combined with an antioxidant. Look, 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 I have another question. I remember when I was at uh, University of Chicago as a medical student, probably one of the first patients I ever had uh, had uh, metastatic melanoma or a mel- melanoma that had spread. And mm. they were doing treatments at the time with immuno... Um, I got to remember. It was probably interferon. It was interferon therapy, right. And that was considered pretty progressive. You know, so that goes back, let's just say, 25 years, right? What If you fast forward from 25 years ago, are we doing any better, all things being equal, with the treatment of melanoma? Yeah, the, the treatment of, of uh, like metastatic or advanced melanoma has gotten much better with a lot of the monoclonal antibody and uh, biologic medicines that are available and um, have been really in the last decade, there's been a huge, huge uh, resurgence in that in that area um but you're still talking about extending uh survival you know usually just a, a couple of years um so by far you know the best treatment for melanoma is preventing it to get to that point in the first place with with uh, early detection and and surgery for you know for early stage melanomas the website is lakeviewderm, D-E-R-M dot com. Again, visiting with Dr. Stephen Mandrea, board-certified dermatologist, a partner at Lakeview Dermatology. Doc, got to head to a break, but thanks so much for joining us here on Sports Medicine Weekly. Thanks for having me, guys. And, uh, you know, everyone should have a great summer, but be safe in the sun. Okay, fantastic. I appreciate it. And uh, let's take a break. We're coming back with uh, a staple of the show. It's our Ask the Doctor segment. Stay with us. You're listening to Sports Medicine Weekly only on 670 The Score.